All right, this is Grade 3, Module 5, Lesson 14. And in this lesson, students are going to be, for the first time, placing fractions on a number line, which brings uh, an added level of complexity. So teachers, uh, you're going to need to be aware of this. For example, a real famous misunderstanding that students make is if I say, I want you to cut a line into thirds, and then here's my line, and then here's one, zero, and here's one, okay? And I want this to be cut into thirds. A real common mistake that third graders make is they see the word third, and so they draw three lines. And because they're thinking of these lines as somehow being connected to the word thirds. And what they often don't understand is uh, that when we're talking about fractions, we're not talking about these horizontal, I mean these vertical lines here. What we're thinking about is the intervals, these horizontal spaces here. So in this case, I was aiming for thirds, but because I drew these three lines, I actually created fourths because there's four intervals. And so that's the point of this number line concept is we really want students to recognize fractions as numbers that live on a number line. And therefore they need to understand that we're talking about the intervals, not these vertical slices here. Okay, so that's the big thing. So I'm gonna, I don't like the fact that I'm leaving this here. So that's wrong. And so what would thirds look like? So there's one, and there's zero. Thirds would require two lines, one, two, because really we're creating thirds, like one third, one third, and one third. So that's what we're talking about. So in this problem, it says draw a number bond for each fractional unit and then partition the fraction strip to show the unit fractions of the number bond. And then lastly, use the fraction strip to help you label the fractions on a number line. So the idea, teachers, is students, when they're cutting fractions uh, with a tape diagram here, they very rarely make mistakes uh, with a tape diagram but when it becomes uh, time to do that on a number line, they suddenly make those mistakes that I was telling you about earlier. And so we're going to connect these two at first so that our third graders can get used to the tape diagram and then relate it to the number line. Ultimately, students will be able to go straight to the number line because that's exactly what we want. So first thing we're going to do is draw that number bond. So if we want fifths, that means we're going to have one, two, three, four, five. So here's our fifths. And that is what the number bond looks like right there. And so that's what our number bond would look like. Now to partition our fraction strip or our tape diagram, I call this a tape diagram, well, we need to cut it into five equal sized pieces. And so let's see, one, two, three, four, five. That's pretty close. That's pretty, pretty accurate. So there's our fifths. And it says we are supposed to uh, label. And so I am going to zoom in and let's label these. So this is one fifth. And then, oopsies, undo. I want to erase that. Good. And then zoom out. And I'm going to zoom in. And label this one-fifth. And then I'm going to label this one-fifth. And label this one-fifth. And label this one-fifth. So there is our tape diagram correctly labeled with the fifths. And so the idea is, on our number line, and I'm going to zoom in again, because I want to look at just the tape diagram and the number line. So where are our intervals going to go? They're going to go at the same places as on our tape diagram. But now, when we label this, 
Uh, this is zero fifths. This is one fifth. This is two fifths. This is three fifths. This is four fifths. And this is five fifths. So, teachers, what's really kind of interesting for third graders is to see that when we have a tape diagram, we record the fifths here. But when we're talking about a number line, we record the fifths here. So it's kind of an interesting thing that the students have to get used to and understand our labeling. So I'm going to zoom out and make sure I labeled everything correctly. I think so. Let's move on. So this one, it says Carter needs to wrap seven presents. He lays the ribbon out flat and says, if I make six equally spaced cuts, I'll have seven pieces. I'll have just enough pieces. I can use one piece for each package and I won't have any pieces left over. Does he have enough pieces to wrap all the presents? So really, the question is, if we make six equal space, equally spaced cuts, do we have seven pieces of ribbon? So we're going to draw the ribbon, and this is what I said at the very start. Here's our ribbon, and notice that they don't want us to do number lines yet. They're really kind of suggesting a tape diagram at this point. And we're going to make six equally spaced cuts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it's not totally equal, but it's pretty darn close. So when I make six cuts, one, two, three, four, five, six, did I make my seven pieces of ribbon for the presents? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yes, I did. So each one of these is one seventh. One seventh, one seventh, one seventh, one seventh, one seventh, one seventh. Now, it doesn't say I was supposed to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to connect this or relate this to a number line. So here's 0, here's 1. Now these lines are telling me where I'm going to draw my intervals on my number line. And this guy here is 0 sevenths, and then this guy is 1 seventh, 2 sevenths, 3 sevenths, four sevenths, five sevenths, six sevenths, and then seven sevenths. And the idea is students are going to eventually start seeing that seven sevenths is equal to one whole. And that wraps up grade three, module five, lesson 14, putting fractions on a number line.